For full accident management support, including motor replacement, repairs and personal injury compensation claims, just search G4 Claims today. Guess you, you, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I obviously follow Scottish football and, and watch a lot of English football, but I feel that the FA Cup is almost losing its magic because teams don't care as much anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's not worth as it's much. A, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a mistake. The, the problem that we've got now is that it's, it's so important the Premier League and to stay in the Premier League. Yeah. But the teams that they are around the bottom, there is a moment that they start thinking, OK, if I get in the FA Cup, then I'm, I'm going to lose the league and, and they make decisions. Look, Good point that what you asked me because it happened to me at Sunderland. In my, my year at Sunderland, my first year, uh, I was using the League Cup to keep training. Yep. And we were getting through. But people doesn't remember that my first game in League Cup against Southampton, I changed the team completely against Chelsea. Against Southampton, sorry. But we won. So nobody remembers the changes. <laughs> then, quarter final, Chelsea at home. Chelsea beat us at home before like 4-0 or 4-1. And, and then I said, oh, four, three, four, three. And then I, I, I made a few changes as well because I was thinking, listen, we are bottom, eh? Bottom of the table. Yeah. I made a few changes. Then we are one nil down. So we, I don't know, second half, I don't know which minute. I said, okay, I'm going to put Fabio Borini and Key. You remember the Korean? Yeah, yeah. That they were starting normally. Sure. I put them on and we equalized in the last minute, or 90 minutes. And because in the League Cup, it was extra time. It was not replay. We went into extra time and we won it. We key scoring. Yeah. So now you are in the semifinals. Obviously, in semifinals, you play your best team. Yeah. Okay. Now, people forgot about Chelsea and Southampton. That I didn't play my best eleven. Yeah. I started best eleven. But because you went through, well, we go to the final. Three or four games before the final, we lost every game. Three or four games after the final, we lost every game in the league. Okay. Yeah. We still bottom. So when it's coming to the FA Cup, I made the same changes, same changes that I made in the FA Cup. Yeah. Now we lose against Hull. Now they blame me. Aye, exactly. You, you, can't, you so, can't win. You can't win. You know? Now, I said to them, okay, why did I make those changes? Because I thought the Cup helped me a little bit in the beginning. The team was getting better. Then we went to the final. And during the period before and after the final, we were absolutely rubbish in the league. Sure. Again in the bottom. I said, we can't do the same in the FA Cup and go down. I said, they took me here. They gave me the job to save Sunderland from relegation. Yeah. That's my job. When I asked the owner, my first meeting, okay, what do I need to do? Please keep us in Premier League. If you keep us in Premier League, Premier. you know, yeah. forever. So at that time, I said, listen, I cannot get away from my aim. I'm going to try to do the same that I done in the other one. A few changes, decent team. It will get through, fantastic. If no, Saturday we win. And then at the end of the year, we stood up. Miraculous. It was a great escape. But the job was done. You know, why you ask me? Like I said last time, man, a, few play, a few people got upset. They said to me, stay up, beat Newcastle. <laughs> I stay up yeah. and I beat Newcastle every time I play them. <laughs> then for a year you suck me. Fair enough. But what do you ask me? <laughs> stay up? I'm the job. Yeah. You know, I, I think that people forget that. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know, I can tell you Chris, Chris Hilton last year. Yeah. What was the aim of Brighton? Stay, stay up. up. Yeah. You stay yeah. up. But they suck him. For style of play or whatever. Right on this year, until the last game, it was only three points ahead of Chris Hutton previous year. Yeah. They won the last game because, okay. Yes. Now, three points. They stay up. Yeah. But, different approach because a new manager, style of play. Yeah. You know, you, 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 know, you know more than anyone, Gus, about, you know, writing, letting managers go and there doesn't seem to be a, a reasonable but, explanation. So, me, what I would like is to sit down with my next chairman. Okay, where is the end, chairman? Tell everybody. <laughs> this and this. Say it publicly. Say it publicly. Yeah. Okay, that's my job. See, gentlemen, you know my job. I need to keep you out and be in your castle. Yeah. Then, if I don't be in your castle, I don't stay up, 
you're going to sack me or I need to go because yes. I like to take responsibilities like I done in China that I resigned when I saw my team that I couldn't they couldn't play my way after seven months I think I need to go I mean this is embarrassing it's not me yeah. now it's not difficult you know yeah. uh, where I didn't achieve my aim uh, in the Betis, Betis. I, did. I was three months Okay, I didn't have the chance because yeah. <laughs> I got sacked before, but sure. I have to say it was not working. The rest, what you ask me? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, you ooh. ask me in Brighton, you ask me, can you get us up, save us from relegation? Get us up when we go to the Amex. Yeah. Save from relegation, Champions League one, Amex, we went from 7,000 people to 23,000. Sure. Then get us to the Premiership. Okay, like, like you know, I'm a magician. <laughs> okay, but we finished fourth, we lost in the semi-finals. Okay, my fault. Fair enough. It seems nowadays that there's just so much pressure on managers. You know, if, if, if it had been like that in the early days, Alex Ferguson would never have got to where he was with Man United. You know, there's... No, no, no that, but the, the main thing is that because nothing is clear. Because nowadays, I think, I think the manager can, can get sacked for anything. Sure. You know, when, you know when people said, in the past it was results. And it's true. You win, you stay, you lose, you are out. Then it started with the results and uh, way of playing. Sure. You need to play a certain way. Nobody knows which way, but a certain way. Then it was results, way of playing, relationships. But wait, relationships. Relationship with the players. Relationship with the board. Relationship with the press. Relationship with the referees. Yeah. Relationship with, oh my God. I mean, you're no longer a manager anymore, are you? There's so much more to it. Or you become a robot. Yeah. And, you know, you like, depending who you are with, you, are, you got a different chip, a different bottom. Yeah. Or, but listen, it's life, no, nowadays. Life, yeah. what you can say, what you cannot say, politically correct, not politically correct, this war, that war, people is telling what we can say, what we cannot say. Uh, if you are honest, oh, no, no, because he it says the truth. What, what do you mean? I need to be dishonest or I need to say lies? Yeah. Uh, people does not like you saying, I don't know. People prefer people making a, a story but not accepting that they don't know. But if you don't know, you don't know. I always say the word no. Yeah. No. If you ask me now, uh, can you give me an opinion on this person? And I think it's dangerous. I would say, you know. No. Yeah. Now, if you say, oh, you cannot say no. Why, why no? I mean, dictionary, no. And oh, yes, it's there. Why not? Sure. No, they prefer me to say, well, maybe, you know. What? No. Yeah. But we'll, that's we'll, it. we'll quickly go back to the end of your playing career, guys, just before we go into management, yeah. if that's okay. But going from Chelsea to, to Tottenham, what, what, what were you uh, thinking? Easy decision for me. I know that people doesn't understand because they put themselves in their own situation. Yes. Uh, most of my teammates, and I'm not going to give names, they convinced me to stay in London for okay. my way of living. Then secondly, uh, at that moment in time, Tottenham was not our biggest rivals, even if they want to make it now. Uh, when I go to a club, the first thing I know is who I need to beat. That's for sure. sure. Okay. And when I came to Chelsea, our biggest rivals were Man United and Arsenal. Yeah. And it was not Derby. Sure. The, when, when I asked, what is the Derby of uh, Chelsea? They told me Fulham. <laughs> no way. Well, next door. Yeah. Because Arsenal is Tottenham. And you cannot make Chelsea Tottenham or Chelsea Arsenal. Because the biggest Derby in London is Tottenham Arsenal. Bottom line. Sure. I'm telling you, I play. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I know that's a Derby. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for us at Chelsea, I was part of Chelsea during that time that we didn't lose uh, for 20-something games against Tottenham. Yeah. So Tottenham was not in my radar as a rival. Sure. My biggest rivals were nice. Man United and Arsenal, that they were winning the league. Yeah. A little bit of friction with Leeds, but that was history. Yeah. Chelsea Leeds. Okay? Not the team, aren't they? Yeah. But Tottenham. <laughs> Tottenham was like West Ham. I'm sorry, the same. Now, after I went there and I saw all the drama, I thought, what happened here? So I was a little bit naive. Yeah. And I accepted to you. I was naive. I didn't have that opinion on Tottenham. 
maybe I made a mistake, but I mean, it was a decision. On top of that, like Mourinho said in his press conference when he took that, you didn't want me, no? Ranieri right? didn't want me at Chelsea. Yeah. He didn't want me. So oh, why, why do I need to why why do I need to go now to a place that is better for you when you don't want me? Yeah. But anyway. Uh, did you did you get much hassle from the, the Chelsea fans when you went? Well, I, I think my first game back to Stamford Bridge was a little bit 50-50, you know, yeah. with the people. Which that's football okay. fans, isn't it? It's football fans. Yeah, but I think I think they need to be over that. I think I explained it many times, and I think it's clear. Like, if they think different to that, it's because they were not aiming to win the league. I was aiming to win the league with Chelsea. That yeah. was my rivals, were my United and Arsenal. So if Chelsea's biggest rivals were at my time supporters, it was Tottenham. There they were looking at sixth position, fifth. Tottenham was never in the top four. So I was aiming higher. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, it's, yeah. it's everyone opinions. And your, your goal scoring record at Tottenham was fantastic. You got to the league Listen, cup final as well. Ch- Chelsea was spectacular and Tottenham was not bad. My first year it was very in Tottenham is clear. My first year the team was very strong. Big, big personalities, massive personality. We're talking Is about Teddy Sheringham, yeah. Le Ferdinand, Darren Anderton, Stefan Fromm, Mauricio Tarico, uh, Tim Sherwood, uh, characters. You know, yeah. I, I was in the in the lineup and I was thinking, wow. The position got a problem with us. <laughs> we yeah. are tough. Sure. Now, the second year, people start going, the Ferdinand team, Sherwood, and yeah, we become a mixed team, which wasn't too bad. My last year was terrible. Sure. Between a few injuries I had, the team was too young, uh, football was not good enough, it, it was not enjoyable, you know. That's why I retired after that. You know, yeah. During the season, I think, okay, this is my last one. I'm not enjoying football anymore. Did, would you ever have? Do you, do you ever regret not continuing and dropping to a lower level, or do you think you know? Finish well, the- uh, why see? Then if White tried to convince me, he was the manager of Millwall at that time. <laughs> but I went to see one training session and one game, and I thought, oh, no, no, for you, no, no. Well, it would be over my head all the time. I said, no, no. Uh, get the ball on the deck. Uh, no, no for and the running and the thing, no, no. It was enough. I think 36, it was fair. More than fair. It, it seems it seems to be a, a reoccurring theme that you've got a good relationship with Dennis Wise and then he was the man that brought you into coaching as well. Yes, I went back to Uruguay. I didn't, want, I didn't want to have any regrets as a family. So I went to Uruguay with my family. After a year and a half situation in Uruguay, it wasn't for me. And I met Wisey in two uh, centenary um, dinners of Chelsea in London. I came back for this special date. And he said to me, do you want to work? And I'm thinking, mm. you know, like, it brought back memories. And then he called me, it was an opportunity at Swindon. And I brought the whole family back to England, which was incredible. So it was good. It was a good experience. It was perfect for me to get into football again. Yep. And what, what was it like going from, you know, Swindon, then at Leeds United as well, wasn't it? Well, Leeds, it was funny in the beginning. Because we were Chelsea. Yeah, exactly. But the fans, they were like... Like Chelsea? Yeah. yeah. I remember they were singing like, get the Chelsea out of Leeds. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we showed them the, the passion that we both have. Yeah. And it was a strange year. We had administration. The team was bad. Went down. Then we started with minor 15 in League One. Uh, we had a great start. We won like seven in a row. I mean, the relation with the Leeds fans, especially myself, it was... It was a spectacular, you know. Uh, until today, people start recognizing the work that we done. You know. Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that because it was get Chelsea out of Leeds. But I feel that yeah. you and Dennis are the the type of players that Leeds fans would love. You know. It's... Yeah, but I, I think that in the beginning it was typical because it was a, as well a, an issue with Ken Bates. You know, so everything was involved with Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, but they, they, they were they were they are honest. They were. Honest. I mean, I what I see in Leeds away from home in League One. Yeah. I never see it in another country. Yeah. I mean, we were, the first game of the season, we watched Tramere and we take like seven, 8,000 people yeah. to Tramere. That's crazy, isn't it? League one. Yeah. It was more Leeds fans than Tramere. The, the fourth game, I think, or fifth, we played Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest leads in League one. It's ridiculous, isn't it? 
Listen, <laughs> and, and if I'm sure, eh? and the whole, I mean, the stadium is packed, yeah. funny enough, and the whole end going out to the right is all leads. I mean, it's, it's like a premiership game. Yeah. Uh, but then yeah, I got a call middle of November from Juan de Ramos to go with him at the Premier League. Uh, I talked to Denny. Obviously, it was a strange decision, but you know, sometimes things happen in life and I, I had to make the decision to go. Yeah, and you, you won the League Cup there as well, didn't you? Well, it's still the last cup of Tottenham. Yeah. They don't believe it, but it's true. I told them when, when we got sacked, I remember <laughs> I said, okay, fair, no, totally deserve eh, the sacking. I'm honest. I told you before, we couldn't win a football game in the second season. So <laughs> when you deserve to get sacked, you deserve to get sacked and you cannot hide. Sure. Uh, but I told them, okay, let's see when you win the next cup. We're still not won it. Let's see when is the next trophy. <laughs> and they said to me, oh, we're going to go in the Champions League. We're going to go here. Yeah, yeah, but Went to trophy. No. It, it goes back to that thing we touched on, Gus. It's like supporters want to win trophies. You know, they don't care if they finish sixth or seventh. They want to win trophies. And there's I, I know there. because yeah. I know because that trophy, in special, for, especially for me, was different because I was an assistant. Yeah. So you're not making decisions, but you're helping. It's yeah. against Chelsea, which for me, yeah, a little bit of a tricky game. Uh, we start losing one nil, Drogba, obviously, you know, our Wembley. Uh, but the reaction from the Tottenham fans after that uh, was incredible because they needed a cup, they needed a trophy, and especially against the Chelsea for them. Yeah. So uh, I think that's well the recognition of something that happened in a very, very short period of time. Sure. You feel after that point, you know, you'd, you'd been an assistant for a a number of teams now. This is my step. In my yes. I need to go After forward. I left, we left uh, second year early, early time. I think it was October or something like that. 2008 and I said, or so, was it? Yeah. Eh? 2008, would that be right? 2008, yeah. yes. Uh, and I said, uh, okay, now is my time. Uh, yeah. So I started preparing myself, my staff. I started searching, doing certain research, putting in consideration things from Dennis and from Juan that I like it. The things I don't like it away, put my aim. And then I went into the summer of 2009 thinking, okay, this is my chance. I thought, honestly, again, so you know me, premiership, I got no chance. But championship, come on. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> and then nothing. No one meeting, nothing. And I saw, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to go down. Sure. And then in November... Uh, why she called me and said, look, a friend of mine called me if, you are, if you would be interested in Brighton. And I'm thinking, let me have a look. Yeah. And I checked and I'm thinking, oh, 20th from 24th. Yeah. Oh. First game, first game away at Southampton <laughs> with the Lambert and Fonte and company. And I said, uh, so I called my assistant, Tariko, play with me at Spurs, and we said, we need to start. Yeah. And we started. We went down there. We started training. Yes. And uh, we changed a little bit the history of Brighton as well with the help of Dick Knight, who was an ex-chairman, and, and especially Tony Bluna then. And you, you touched on that Southampton game that you were thinking, oh, I'm not sure. It was 3-1 win. What's that? It's my birthday, 15 of November. Okay, We're mm -hmm. going there. Again, Southampton, Brighton, League One. It's strange. It's Brighton 20th. Okay. Uh, we start the game, uh, and as, as seven minutes, eight minutes, I need to make my first change tactically because they are killing us on the right side. They're destroying us. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is going to be there. But then Glenn Murray scored. Ten minutes later, Glenn Murray scored. And I'm thinking, this is easy. You know, like, this is easy. <laughs> the second half, they, it was, we were hanging because they scored at the end of the first half, and then the second half, Southampton was coming from everywhere. And we were hanging and hanging and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then making a few changes, we had a break and we scored the third goal. And it was, oh. I said to the players, it was probably one of the best presents I ever had in my birthday. Because to have that first yeah, debut in yeah. that manner, it was, it was very special. And from then on, the players got convinced. They, they knew the way that we wanted to do things and, and we got better and better. The second year is extraordinary. Mm. You, you brought in a lot of players, Gus. You brought in uh, 
Scottish players as well, Gordon Greer. Well, Gordon was my first big signing yeah. practically because yeah. we needed a little bit of a change at the back of the way I wanted to play and a character as well, a leader, uh, which uh, it shows a little bit my way, no? Sure. For example, I, I have players that have been in Brighton for a while. They, they probably deserve it to be captains. Yeah. But I had a different mentality or way of what I wanted for a captain. Sure. So we went to watch uh, Gordon a couple of times at Swindon, and we decided it was a perfect fit for us. Yeah. Uh, and and if it was, it was. Uh, it brought leadership. It was uh, presence, a way of playing, understanding, uh, commitment, a little bit of craziness as well, which is nice, you know, the good one. So uh, it was tough for me to explain to the players that he would be my captain. Yeah. It's not easy when. New player, captain, you know, like, wow. Yeah. But uh, I'm in charge for that and I need to take responsibility for good or for bad. And, and I think the players, they understood that. They, they knew later on why. Of course. Because it was a, a, a good leader. And what, what was it like when you, you gained promotion with Brighton then? Was that a remarkable achievement well, as well, you know? The, the problem with Brighton was that the previous year I took the job, they fought the, fought the rele- relegation. They got saved just. And then they gave me to save them from relegation. And we finished 13 at the end. Okay. But when I got the team, it was 20th and we were very close. Mm-hmm. And I, I won that game, but then I lost at home against Leeds and I lost a, away at Norwich. Look at the teams in League One. Big teams, big teams. Norwich, yeah. Southampton, Leeds One. Mm-hmm. And uh, we started getting better at the end. Uh, so in the second season, they said to me, we need to get up. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> How are you going to go from playing relegation every season to get up? Yeah. So I said, okay, let's try. You know, top six, playoff. And then we started the second season very well. And it's a game that we play away from home at Plymouth. But I saw the team playing in a way. I think, oh, this is... They've got something. This is, yeah, it's a click. Yeah. And then next game at home, we score in the last minute, or 90 second minute, to go top. I think it's eighth, ninth game of the season. And from then on to the end, I mean, it was, I never see people not believing in a possibility of playing football in a certain way in League One, to be totally convinced that it was possible. Yeah. Extreme. You know when it's two extremes? Crazy. People were saying to me, you've got no chance. And then people saying, unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a famous song that I cannot reproduce because I had a letter already from the FA in the celebration when we won the league, which he says uh, from, the che- from the Brighton fans, away uh, Peterborough started. Okay. We play, I mean, difficult to play better than that. Uh, and the, the, the song, it goes, the, no, no, we are F word, yeah, we are <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> and it's, we really are, and all the time, and they keep saying, and I'm thinking, are they saying what I'm thinking? You know, I asked my first team coach, Charlie Owen, he said, yeah, yeah, Gaffa, they're saying we, we're 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 yeah. Yeah. And then we went Chardon, and we went at Chardon away from home, 0-4. Imagine the stand. Brilliant. More than brilliant. Yeah. And that became like a song that... Kept going. Brought, yeah. Yes, because it was difficult to see that change. Uh, and uh, what, 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 what do you think? There was a secret. Well, I, 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 th- I think we were very good with recruiting. The okay. recruitment was excellent. Uh, yeah. Gordon Greer, yeah. Ashley Barnes, he's in Burnley now. We bought him from Plymouth for seventy thousand mm-hmm. pounds. Uh, so there were plenty. Of and then the, the 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 players that they were at the club, and I can name you a few. I, I don't want to be unfair with anyone, but you know the the Tommy Elfix, the the Adam Elav. The Alan Navarro at that time, Gary Dicker, Elio Bennett, uh, Crofty in the beginning, then Croft left, uh, Glen Murray, then we brought Lua Lua. And, uh, you know, the, and you brought in, did you, did you bring in Bradka as well? Liam Bradka. Liam Bradka, I brought Liam Bradka, I brought Calderon, Marcos Painter, but the players that they were already at the club, they kind of embrace this new way of playing football for them. Yeah. So we were training. Uh, and, and you can see that they were, I like this, you know, like, and then they would put in the game, and because it will work, obviously, eh? that's the most important, it needs to work in the games. They were coming back to me and say, 
you know, like, woof, this is good. And yeah. then they start seeing, re seeing the reaction of the people. And then they start, for example, uh, it's one sentence from Adam, uh, Adam and Love, a strong center, center half. He said to my assistant, Tano, for the first time, I'm in the right side, in the good side. Okay. You know, because as a, as a defender, he was always in the Understood. defending, suffering, mm -hmm. suffering all the time. Yeah. And now I'm in the Good side. That, so yeah. that kind of reactions uh, with the team, like I said, the players that were already at Brighton embracing this new way, plus the players that we brought in, Matt Sparrow, you know, like we've got Chris Wood on loan down in Burnley. We've got plenty of players that they were coming to help us. We got a group of players that they were not 99%, 100% convinced. Yeah. Change the mentality. Then we needed to buy or, or bring very specific players mm -hmm. because they needed to suit into the way we were playing. But it was really a change of direction completely. And as well as promotion, which was a remarkable achievement in itself, you also got manager of the year. Yeah, well, it was, you know, when you start and you do your best, it feels like it's going to be easier until you get a knockdown. But it, it was especially, I, I'm telling you, if, if you talk to the players from that year, they will say to you, probably the best day of the year of their life. They, they, they probably play a higher level, most of them in the Premier League. Yeah. But in terms of understanding in a group of players, knowing what to do every time, anywhere. You know, I remember going to Mars, Mars, yeah, in, in, the, in the month of March, and said to me, be careful because normally Mars, the team's day, yeah. it's when you lose the league or you win the league. We lost 18, we won, sorry. We, lost. we won 18 in a row in the league. That's amazing. But yeah. like, I remember Southampton was coming behind and I would remember probably thinking they finished the game, they were winning as well, eh? yeah. and they would check right on, oh, they won. <laughs> it's cycle. It no, no, yeah. Oh, we won. Let's check the right on. Well, they won. They said, so it didn't yeah. matter what they were doing yeah. because we were not losing. So that was the problem for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we, won, we were promotion at home in a crazy game, 4-3, crazy game. And then we went into Walsall to to get the trophy, which it was uh, an special day as well. No, it was, it was a good start for me. It was uh, an understanding that it's possible. Yeah. And you, you had a great start to the next year as well, didn't you? You started winning. It started very well. We brought in special players. We kept growing. We went into a beautiful stadium with more than 20,000 people. Uh, first game, it was strange. We got a few injuries. I got sent off. But we made a few changes. We won in the 90-something. Uh, it, it was a change in the city. The city was recognizing themselves in a different way. Yeah. And that, that brought people from Brighton to feel more and more close to the, to the club. Second year in the championship, uh, yeah. we, we went up to 30,000. Yeah. We, we filled the corners of the stadium for more people to come. Uh, we were beating teams in, uh, in the Premiership in the FA Cup. You know, the team was growing. It was something coming into it that Obviously, the aim was the Premier League, for sure. Yeah, and I think you played a huge part in that. You know, yourself, the, the players you brought in, the new stadium, there was a real hype around the place. Uh, listen, I'm convinced, okay? I know that when you leave a football club and depending how you live, people try to hide things. But, uh, you know, if you go to Swansea, there is a before and after Roberto Martinez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No doubt. I don't want to put that at that level, but probably. You know, the, the team was struggling. They were in a bad way. There were so many problems. Many years playing away from Brighton. The stadium was poor. So many things. And then at the right time, everything's coming together. I, th I think my relationship with Tony Bloom was exceptional. And that helped. When you have a coach and a chairman working in the same way, understanding life and football the same way, the only result is good things. Yes, yeah. happy days. Did you sign the five-year deal, didn't you? Five years? We signed a five-year deal after the second year. Things changed at the club. I was a manager. People maybe you know thought I needed to be more as a coach than a manager because the teams, the teams, the, the, the clubs, they grow up as well. And other people they come in into the club, and it wasn't the same. So things happen, you know, like uh, like in life, like with your wife or with your kids. You know, things happen for a reason. Nothing, nothing to regret. What, what was it? your final game was against Palace? Is that right, Crystal Palace? Yeah, big derby. We went to Palace first leg of the final, final and uh, semi-final, and we played fantastic. I can't believe we didn't win that game. 
So we, maybe it was a little bit of overconfidence surrounding the whole, the whole thing, sure. or obviously us involved, uh, because after the performance of the team during the season, how we were finished the season and how we play a Palace, normally, I don't know, 70-30, 60-40, the outcome was, you know, we were favorites to go through. Of course. But Palace was playing as well, and Saha was playing as well. Yeah, it's a bit strange. And uh, they scored a goal, and the game opened up, and then they scored the second, and it was over. And, and, and that, people take it very personal, but it's a football game. Uh, it's not a ticket. We, we were massively disappointed. And, uh, and the outcome was me leaving the football club in the, in the summer later on, with a little bit of a farcical situation. But I'll never forget, you know, was it the Spain, Spain game on telly you were, you were working on? Spain game yes, uh, no, it was a Copa Confederaciones in in Brazil. Uh, national teams playing. I was in BBC. Yes, we were negotiating to have an agreement nicely, yeah. but unfortunately, they decided during that problem. Yeah. <laughs> it was a shock, but yeah. it was good for BBC. Very good for BBC. Yeah. Do you look back on your time there fondly, or do you? Yes, yeah. no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Is, uh, as, as a coach, is my best moment. Not the, 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 the one that it gets the most recognition uh, worldwide, but it was the best time. The best time because the understanding with the players, the way we play, the way we control, the challenge that we had. You know, we, you will prepare a game by, based on yourself, but also based a little bit on what the opposition can do. And the opposition, they were changing completely against us. Sure. So the team needed to resolve the problems, the players themselves most of the time, depending on what the opposition was proposing. For yeah. example, no? we were playing a, a game at home against the top of the table. And the top of the table was winning for fun. And then you will start playing and they will drop. <laughs> and the player will look at me saying, what happened here? I said, play. Yeah. So we, we needed to train the team to find themselves uh, solutions for any problem. Sure. And they were, they were doing it themselves. It was probably the only team I was watching the game, not all the time, but most of the time, sit, sit down with my assistant watching the game. Yeah. Because the players would do the job. You can trust them. In, in, in other teams, I needed to be in the touchline telling people what to do. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was the best. Yeah, no doubt. That's why it's so special for me. And you've still, you've still got a great relationship with the supporters, yeah? Well, I think the supporters, they know me. They know how much I gave them. And how, you know what? There is one sentence which I like. That I think it's, it's true. People maybe forget what you say. People maybe forget what you did. Yeah? Sure. But they will never forget how you made them feel. That's okay? Yeah, it's true. And the supporters that they were in the pitch, like I said to you, away at Peterborough, away at Charlton, 18 yeah. games in a row. Uh, you know. a, yes. Yeah. That's a feeling. Mm -hmm. And you know what I know that? Because we're going to come later, if my battery is all right. Um, Sunderland, yeah. we lost the final against Man City. Okay, the League Cup final. Yeah. And a couple of years back, I met a fan uh, at the underground in London. And the guy said to me, oh, guys, I'm a Sunderland fan. So oh, how are you, bro? He said, you made me feel the best I ever feel in my life at Wembley with Sunderland. And my reaction was, we lost. We lost. Yeah. He said, yeah, but how I felt at halftime when we were winning 1-0, I yeah. never felt in my life. And that goes back to my, the sentence. You know what you did? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's how he, they feel. At halftime, the Sunderland fans, they were in dreamland. We were exactly. bottom of the table and we were beating Man City at Wembley. Yeah. So the feeling is difficult to reproduce. Uh, and that's why I think it's the Brighton fans will always have something very special. And probably because they don't know the whole truth of yeah. how it feels. Yes, you, said, uh, you said earlier on when you first went into management, you thought, I want to be in the Premier League and nothing yeah. came. Sunderland's a step up again, you know, it's straight into the Sunderland's a step up. It was a difficult challenge. I uh, have to say many, many friends of mine said to me, don't, don't yeah. do it, don't take it. Why? One point from seven games. Sure. They said, you got no chance, you need to change the whole team. It's, it's October, it's not January that you can bring five players. Yeah. 
But to get in the premiership, you need to take a challenge and you need to take a risk. And uh, we really believe in what we we do. And we went there and with the help with the players and with the timing and with the cup, the momentum. And yeah. we done it, which it was, I mean, I, I cannot say, uh, probably I was happier when I won the League One title than when I got safe with Sunderland. Happier. But relief? 100% the Sunderland one. Yeah. I mean, my that last day, remember, it's six games to go, Sunderland, we're bottom, seven points from salvation. Seven. Yeah. We six games to go. Yeah. And we need to go Man City away, champions that year, Chelsea away, then we go Cardiff at home, Man United away, and then we go uh, West Brom and Swansea. And we go to Man City and we drew. We say, okay, a point. It was we still yeah. six points. Then we go to Chelsea and we win. Then we come in Cardiff. I knew we be that one. I knew we would win. Yeah. Then we go to Man United. We didn't. Sunderland didn't win a Man United for forty-eight years or something like that. And we beat Man United. Man United. Yeah. yeah. And then the most nervous I've been in my life is against West Brom at home <laughs> because now I need to win to stay safe. Yeah. So I say, drew a Man City away. Drew uh, beat Chelsea away. Beat Man United away. If I don't win this one, I kill myself because, you know, it should be common sense. So when that game finished, I was like, you know, like, okay, leave me alone. I remember because the chairman came to see me, uh, uh, Mr. Ellis Short, and he went to talk for next year. I said, chairman, you know what? I'm sorry. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah not I want, just... I want to go home, spend 10 days away from life. Yeah. And when I come back, we sit down and we talk whatever you like. But I need to get away from here. I lost five years of my life. It yeah. was very, 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 very difficult. But it was a good decision. I, <laughs> I understood how important football for the Sunderland people. Yeah. And for that, you need to live there. Like I, I was living at Sunderland City Centre. And did you, how, how is your comparison from the, the North East to London? Well, it was, it was difficult. Yes, it was uh, the weather was terrible, terrible. <laughs> yeah. every day. Uh, the passion was spectacular. Um, the repercussions of being a coach, manager of a Premiership team is amazing. Yeah. It's worldwide. Okay. Uh, when, when, I, when I done one of those games, important games that we won against a top team, I will get emails, texts, WhatsApps, from everywhere in the world. And I can say to you, I got a friend in Japan who done the coaching with me. I got a well-known person in, in Australia, obviously Argentina, Uruguay, Spain. From everywhere in the world, you will get someone who watched the game and yeah. is sending you a contract. Congratulations. Only the Premier League. Yeah, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's worldwide. They watch the Premier League ever and you are only one of 20 managers. So yeah. the repercussions are... Tremendous, tremendous. Since, since Sunderland, guess you you you've been all over the world. You've been to Greece, Spain. Yes, I, I want you to get. I want you to get out. Yeah. To come back to see something different. Yeah. My idea was to go to Greece, back to England, and because we done very well in Greece, they took me to Spain. Yeah. China was uh, connections and blah 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 in the middle, and then I lost the momentum in England. And the call in Bordeaux was a special. Bordeaux is a massive team in France. Huge. And uh, I done very well. I would like to go back to, to France because I, I love the way of... Uh, I, I was able to affect the team in, in France. Sure. But again, I came back to England. I said, okay, I want to get back in England. And it's been difficult. It's been difficult. You know, you get out of uh, what we call the, the circle. Yeah. You know, the same managers changing teams. And to get back, is like uh, it's been a little bit more difficult than expected. But... Yeah. And I don't lose my my mind. I'm just waiting. Would Would you ever come to Scotland? Because I seen previously that I had I had a I had a very very small but very fair and honest approach from Ibernia last year yeah. when uh, Clark went to the national team. Yeah. Uh, it was not the right time. Is it eh? Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock, sorry, Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kilmarnock. Uh, I'm so sorry. We were very honest, very polite. Uh, just because of uh, connections uh, through a player sure. that they just asked me if I was being interested. But at that precise time, I was 
uh, negotiating with the team. Uh, you know, you know when you think, okay, I'm the next manager of this team. Yeah. It's me. We, we just get in details. Yeah. Uh, and then one day they disappear and you go. What happened? What happened? Yeah. So at, at that time when I talked to Kilmarno, I said to them, I, really from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. I, I, I would love to have an experience in Scotland. But right now I'm in the middle of something that it's is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it didn't happen. And it was embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Because you, you understand what I mean? Because yeah. probably they will say, hello, what was that big important okay. thing? Yeah. Okay, I cannot tell you, but it was, it was, it was tough. It was, I, I, maybe my way of understanding, when you start negotiating and you get to a point, you're thinking, okay, this little detail is going to be me. Yeah. But something happened in the middle. I don't know why. Boom, they went with another manager. And the, there was rumours, Gus, that you were linked with Rangers before. Was there any truth in that? No? Rangers, uh, directly, no. Uh, of course, it was, I, I think it's a great challenge what uh, Steven Gerrard took. You know, yeah. I think that, that, those kind of challenges I really like. You know, to, for example, simple. To stop Celtic from winning the 10th title it would be amazing for me. It would be fantastic. I hope that, I'm not going against Celtic. I'm just saying, I hope that, you know, someone can take that challenge and done it because some someday it will finish, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Before the tenth or no, it will depend in both in Celtic and in Rangers. No? Uh, but I think it's always special. Look, from my time at Brighton with Gordon Greer, yeah, and um, speaking to the other players, we said once. We were four or five players with the staff. We wanted to go to a Celtic Ranger, Ranger Celtic together. Okay. To feel it. Did you go? No. 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 You know, when you split. Yeah. And one day we had a booking. I had the tickets in my hands. Yeah. Uh, in my hands, sorry, in my computer. Uh, I, I, I go six t- five tickets for a Boca Junior River play. Oh, amazing. And we, and we were flying the whole staff. Yeah. But we couldn't fly. But I had the tickets, yeah. and we were starting booking the flights, uh, and then something happened. Like always, it was a, it was a weekend. I don't remember which weekend it was that we were able to fly and come back, and at the end we couldn't do it. But uh, it was, it was close. So yeah. I'm still waiting for that chance to go to see the the Darwin Of course, what do you think Stephen Gerrard will do it this year? Well, I think that uh, with any doubt, it's getting better. The team yeah. is getting better, so you're getting closer. I think uh, I would try to help him here. <laughs> Steve, if you are listening to me, I think to get better, you need uh, always a little bit of better players. And especially losing Morelos, uh, you need a big player in there. I yeah. think it, the, you know, it has to be a little bit of a, an effort and a help from, from the club, from the board, for Steven to have better possibilities of stopping Celtic to win the the seventh, the tenth, sorry, the tenth championship in Europe. What's the future for Gustavo Poyet? I hope to get back in England. Yeah, there've been a few things, nothing serious. I hope, but because I got any staff with me, I need to open to the world. You know, I cannot make it. I can wait, luckily, but my staff needs to work. So we're looking for. There is a few things that they go around, but nothing for sure. And it's been delayed because of obvious reason, coronavirus. But uh, I hope that we're going to start the season with the team. Please. I think it's good. Okay. Any, any secrets as to who they may be? No, no. It's, it's not because there is no direct negotiations, but, uh, you know, there is approaches and things depending on clubs and managers moving because, no, to be honest, a yeah. in football, you need a manager to leave for you to get in or you need a club to get up for you to get in or something like that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm waiting on those movements. And if they happen, fair enough. Look, I'm going to tell you a funny story for you to know. It was a famous, there is a famous coach in Mexico who said it. Uh, they call him Mohamed, Turco Mohamed. Okay. One, one day he said one thing on TV that I had a similar situation. You know, when they call you from a team, middle season, and say, okay, would you like to come in here? Blah, blah, blah. blah. And you start saying, yeah, boy. and you start talking to them. Okay, if we lose on Saturday, we go ahead. Yeah. And then they don't lose for 10 games, you know, like, <laughs> and you don't get the job. 
Well, that, that happened to him. He said it one time in TV, and I was listening to him saying, oh, that happened to me with a team in Mexico as well. Yeah. Funny, they said to me, yeah, we are not happy. Blah, blah. I said, okay, listen, they had the Benino Sadler call me on Sunday night or you know, call me after. And then they won. And then they keep waiting <laughs> and drawing and waiting and drawing. I didn't go. That's so it happens. It happens sometimes. Final question, Gus. Who's the, who's the best player you've played with and who's the best player you've managed? Best player I play with is Gianfranco Zola, with any doubt. Easy. Uh, best player I manage. Uh, I'm going to pick one when I was a coach. It was Luka Modric. Brilliant player. At Tottenham, Luka Modric was so special. He understands the game like not many players in the world. And I, and I said it when I left Tottenham. So now he's a Real Madrid. He was player of, of the year a few seasons ago. So. Yeah. Uh, it was a really, really special player. The balance, the way he understands the game is outstanding. Sure. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All the best for uh, up in there. I hope the weather is not bad. Ah, it's not bad. Well, it's Scotland, so it's raining as always, but it's not too bad. Thanks to everyone who has watched this episode of the DW Podcast with Gus Poya. If you've not done so, please like and subscribe. Huge thanks to Gus for his time. Uh, much appreciated. Cheers.